creativity. I have sewn as long as I can remember. My mum sewed, she sewed all our clothes when we were kids. We always had a craft room at home. There was always crafting things around. We made gifts for our grandparents every Christmas. So we have, and mum mostly sewing was mum's thing. So yeah, I grew up sewing and having crafts and stuff around and making things. Um, and having had made clothes. Um, and so I sewed as a student, as a young adult, but then I kind of stopped at the point where buying fabric was more expensive than buying clothes. And, you know, new career, new country, busy. So I probably didn't sew for about 30 years. Um, and for a while didn't do any. Uh, I, I knitted then, I suppose. When I, had, when I had young nephews, I knitted, I did some knitting for me, but then also no knitting and crocheting probably for about 10 years. And then when I moved back to Scotland and I had more free time, um, I started crocheting again. So crochet is probably my main crafting activity now, uh, but I also knit and I've been doing more sewing since I've been doing more clothes altering. Mm, oh, tell us about your clothes offering and your wardrobe generally. Um, so, I love clothes and I love colour. So the um, and I like having choice and variety. So, you know, I've thought several times about having a capsule wardrobe, and I would find it really, really hard. So actually, what I do now is because now I don't, I haven't bought any new clothes for a while, but I also haven't given away or thrown out any clothes for several years so when I get bored I just go into my boxes of clothes that I'm not wearing at the moment and try and work out which things I could alter or change so they would be wearable so I enjoy that kind of creativity and it means I get a new thing to wear for a while without actually you know buying things um, when I did it was when I discovered visit the idea of visible mending which I came across on Instagram, I'm not sure how, but I'm sure it was Instagram that I came across it. And that was just like, wow! Because I've always mended things, but it was dull. Um, and so the whole idea of visible mending and therefore being able to be creative. Um, and so, and things like this, like doing crochet on things. I do, I do more of that than altering by sewing. So I've got several jumpers um, like big men's jumpers that I will have got in charity shops that I've totally changed the collar and changed the bottom, you know, so cut them and knitted onto them or crocheted onto them. Um, which also means in terms of crocheting a jumper, the kind of interesting bit round here is fun. The sleeves and the body are just boring and big, you know. So I, I like that kind of combination of buying a second hand jumper and then adding interesting knitted and crocheted things to it. Kind of. It sounds like a very play-based approach. Yes, oh yeah, very much. Um, and creativity is very important to, um, I suppose, how I think of myself, but also my uh, mental well-being. Like, you know, if I'm feeling really down, uh, doing something creative will definitely make me feel better. Um, and, and if I haven't done something creative for a while, I know, you know, I notice it, and but I like uh, problem solving as part of my creativity as well. So mm. even when I'm following a pattern, I deviate. I'm like that too. I can't <laughs> stick to a pattern. Yeah, no, exactly. So I find altering and mending. I like the problem solving component of it as well, but also the using what you have. I like that kind of that bricolage idea of it's a very New Zealand thing and Australian. You know, you use what's there. Um, yeah, and so I like, you know, so I'm, so when I'm darning jumpers and things, I'll because I knit socks, so I've always got the ends of lots of bits of colourful sock wool and just using them. But so it'd be very, very rare that I would buy something in order to do mending. I'd much rather make work, and that is so much easier with visible mending because you're not you're not trying to match anything up. It's just like choose the colour, you know, choose from what you've got. So I'm a big believer in just, you know, choosing from what you've got rather than thinking, oh, something would be perfect. It's like, no, look at what you've got and what's your best bet amongst that. Um, so yeah, so I do a lot of that. So more, more recently I've been, for altering clothes, 
I have been going to charity shops to kind of as a source of fabric to to alter things, particularly you know embroidery on glaze recently because there's a lot of it. Well, there was a lot of it in the charity shop, so added a whole lot of that to a t-shirt, and you know um, I've just I've just mended my um, winter parka uh, by adding new cuffs and new pockets using a. Uh, uh, brown, dark brown shorts that I bought in a charity shop last week. So, yeah, I've I've been doing some of that uh, when I haven't got anything in my stash. But very much I'm just trying to use my stash and my wardrobe. Um, yeah, and 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 trying to be trying very much to use what I have. You're really empowered by these skills too, aren't you? Yeah, oh, very much. Yeah, I really mm. like that I can do it. Yeah. And you mentioned the problem solving, so does that mean that you always get to a good end or sometimes do things go awry and what happens then? Um, I, I suppose I kind of believe in that, is it John Lynn who said, if, you know, if it's not a good end then it's not the end, kind of, you know. Mm. So yeah, sometimes things get put back in the box for further consideration <laughs> at another date. <laughs> because I know that my, you know, well my skills change, my crafting interests change. Yeah, but also I'll get new ideas and things. So yeah, sometimes I mean I've there's I've got one red linen. It's thing. It's too short to be a dress and it's too long to be a tunic. And I, I keep bringing it out and trying to think. I also don't like the sleeves on it, and it hasn't got pockets. So um, which is just like, ugh. um. So yeah, for the last two years I think I've had it out hanging up, trying to think about what I want to do to it still haven't done anything with it but you know one day I'll see the right thing that will get added to it and do something with it and and in the meantime I've altered other things but I've still got new things in circulation for this summer so yeah um it's lovely to see your enjoyment of it thank you yeah that's... you know I, I do I really yeah I enjoy doing it and I enjoy the creativity and I really enjoy that there's a community of it on Instagram mm. so you know I, I follow a lot of the the hashtags on Instagram and the people and I just you know love all the different things that people are doing and uh, yeah and the joy that a lot of people and all the ta-da's I, you know I like it when people celebrate what they've made mm. and uh, are you spending a bit of time on it because sometimes that's yes. a limitation people have isn't it not enough time yeah I'm not working so I've got plenty of time oh yeah and sometimes it takes ages you kind of think oh you know if I was if I was a paying myself minimum wage, this garment would just be. <laughs> but I mean, but that that's an issue when you're crocheting and knitting as well. You know, it takes a long time to make these things. But I enjoy the process, and I'd rather be sitting and crocheting or knitting or sewing than sitting and not doing any of those things. And um, I listen to audio books while I'm doing it or podcasts. So you know, I'm, I'm keeping my mind active as well. Mm. And, you know, from a social perspective, um, coming here and volunteering, that looks like fun too. Yeah, it's really fun. Um, and, yeah, and just really nice to be able to talk to other people who are into mending and altering clothes and want to do it and want to learn it. And, um, yeah, and, like, hoping that, you know, with being here every week, we'll really build up quite a community of people who want to do mending, so as well as teaching people who don't know how to do it kind of become a place for people who who are into mending to come and swap ideas and, and just mend, you know doing these things together um, is good as well as does it feel a little rebellious to be cutting up the clothes and what what's your motivation for that apart from obviously creativity and having fun uh, is it sustainability driven or um yes uh, yes yes keeping stuff out of landfill um, and also saving money um, I mean uh, yeah both for me but also I mean I like it as an idea because it's it saves you know it's a way for people to save money as well that's why I always like you know when we were growing up we had really nice clothes because mum made them and it was cheaper than if they'd been buying them so you know I like that idea that you and also that you can make it yours and you can get exactly what you want I mean in the same way I won't follow a pattern I don't like wearing what everyone else is wearing you know um yeah 
So even even when I was working public, you know, in elected public service in New Zealand, almost all the women are wearing the dark grey suits and the pastel shirts, and I wasn't. You know, it's kind of no, I am not looking like everyone else. So yeah, I think when you, yeah, so even if you're buying something in the shops, you know that other people have had almost invariably change the buttons or do something to it so it's actually different yeah. mm, and the skills that you have um, you know you've obviously learnt um, growing up and and refined them yeah. what do you feel about the limitation on 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 skills that people have generally I now I think it's awful that they're not being taught in schools I just cannot believe that people, you know, that you don't learn at least how to sew and sew on a button and, you know, make running repairs at school. I just can't believe that they're not doing that anymore. Um, and I, you know, and I think that it would be good if there were more places or easier for people to pick up those skills if they want to. And you know, YouTube's a wonderful thing and people learn lots of things um, there. But I do like the fact that, you know, we're helping people here both like Jamie today who never even held a needle or threaded it before you know but also people who you know know how to basically sew but have never done well don't know about the problem solving I guess or the, you need to know a bit about garment construction to mend things and just those kinds of things so yeah I think I think I think in, on any any attempt to for social change there is skill learning that has to be passed on to people I think almost invariably and um, yeah and, and, and I think it's partly about the how to do it but also the confidence to do it the confidence that you can that you're allowed you know nobody's going to come and <coughs> tell you off and, you know it's always that thing of, am I allowed to change the pattern yes it's okay the wool police are on holiday today Um, yeah, so I think that just that confidence, and as you say, that confidence of cutting up something, you know, just do it. Um, yeah, if it goes wrong, it goes wrong. Mm. So I guess there are some people that sort of worry about that adding to waste. Um, mm. How do you feel about that? Or I mean, I'm not one of those because <laughs> I cut things up, but I know there's a bit of judgment. I've yes. had a bit of judgment no, about know. doing but that. I think there's judgment in everything. You know, there's judgment on using cotton because it uses too much water. There's judgment on using acrylics because, you know, it, it's plastic. There's judgment on using wool because it came from the animal. It's like, what are we meant to be using? You know, there's judgment if we buy new fabric. There's judgment if we buy, you know, any I just think there's... So what's your, your solution is just do what you feel you need to do? Yes, I mean, but yeah, be aware. And so I would, ra I would rather use fabric from a, a second-hand garment and buy new fabric, if that's possible. Um, I'd rather use the fabric from a garment that was otherwise going to go to landfill rather than that somebody was going to buy. But those are, you know, those are all just options. Um, but you know, I think we all do what we can. And, and if we all go around having a go at each other for not being perfect, then nobody will do anything. You know, I mean, if, if people are just wanting to dip their toes into the mending or the altering, then telling them you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this, it's going to scare them off. You know, I'd rather people did something than, you know, if we scare them off by being disapproving of things. So, you know, yes, I've got a box full of bits of fabric at home and hopefully I'll use them all one day, but... And I guess it is very much a learning by doing thing, yes, isn't it? It is. You know, and a lot of those things, you know, I've altered them now. I'll wear them for a while. I'll do something else with them. Maybe they'll end up as dusters. <laughs> but I'll, you know, I'll keep using them while I can. Um, and, and I think, yeah, that's better than just chucking things out because, you know, there's something wrong with it or it doesn't quite fit. So, 